okay <clears throat> so as part of our last thread example what we did <clears throat> we have written one task like two tasks so these two tasks meaning task one and task two so these two tasks are like a sequential programming right so one by one it's a normal program correct there yeah. is no thread so one by one first this for loop will execute after that second for loop will execute so to make it parallel programming like a two for loops i want to execute at a time together so then what we made it so we have written uh separate threads correct right by extending a thread class correct mm -hmm. so then we are starting the thread by using t dot start correct right. Mm -hmm. So we, whenever we are calling t dot start, so it is calling run method, correct? Right. Basically, we are not calling here t dot run, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how, what is happening? You know, whenever we are calling t dot start, what will happen? So this thread, thread task two thread, what will happen? It will register with CPU. So we have only one CPU, right? In our uh, wherever we are using the system, correct? Right. So what it will do, it will register with the CPU and it will get some unique ID that is called thread ID. So last time we printed ID, right? Mm -hmm. So this thread ID, whenever, whenever you are calling t dot start, what it will do inside the start method. So all these, all these things will be happening. What it will do, it will register with the CPU it will register with CPU and it will get some ID each thread. So that's what whenever you are getting, whenever you are calling t2 dot get id, then you will get some unique id. So that unique id will be given by CPU. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you register with CPU, then only you will get some some time to execute your piece of programming. Otherwise, you are not able to execute it. So, okay, that's what it will register with CPU. Once the registration is done then what will happen once the registration is done then it will start executing the or it will it will start calling the method called run method so from the start method it will call the run method so that's what we are not calling run directly here correct right okay say for instance for task 2 you called one time t2 dot start correct so if right. you will call back again one more time t2 dot start what will happen two times i'm calling start for same thread whatever trying to do you're trying to register one thread two times correct right correct so in this case what happened you know it will go it will give an exception called illegal exception meaning you should not register <coughs> one thread two times Correct. We should not enroll one person two times. Correct. Right. In the similar way, threads also we should not call two times start method on same thread. So meaning, if I will run this one, what will happen? It will throw an exception called illegal exception. Did you see that first thread got failed? Uh, task two thread got failed. see now if you analyze or if you verify the exception we say see illegal thread state exception why because you are trying to register at line number it will show 23 did you see this uh -huh. so you are trying to do duplicate registration correct right so that's what this thread is failed so we should this is also one of the important interview question they will ask they will try to call start method two times they will ask what will happen so basically we should not register same thread two times more than one time it will not allowed correct okay it is clear right these two t2 dot start two times okay and so far we are creating threads by extending thread class correct right so then it will become a thread if you see the thread class what will happen did you see this inside the thread class how many variables are there 
so many so many variables are there right uh -huh. there so many variables so many functions are there correct right? right. so what will happen whenever you are calling extends then what will happen whatever the whatever the functions or methods are available inside thread class everything will be coming to your class correct right then whenever we are creating the task one object this object will become heavier right right why because the inside thread class there is so many methods are available so many functions are available so available everything will be coming into your class correct right it's a it's a heavy object because of thread class okay but this is one way to create thread by using thread class okay right. and there is another way to create thread class by using runnable interface so that we will see now by thread so by so we can able to create thread in two ways one is by using thread class okay and the second one is the second way is by using runnable interface so how to do that one Let's see you Okay, now I have written a simple main class. Okay, <clears throat> inside that, what I want to do, I want to create a thread. So, this is a class A. Agreeable? Hello? Mm -hmm. Yes. So just this, this is a just main class, and I'm going to create one more. I'm I want to create a thread uh, called A. So generally, how we are creating, we will extend the. We are creating thread class like this, correct? So this is the way we are creating thread so far, right? Right. So if I will do extends, then it will become a heavier object, correct? Mm -hmm. Because inside thread class, there is so many. Variables methods are available. So I don't want to extend thread class. So I want to implement Runnable interface Okay, this is second way and I we have to implement runnable interface and inside the runnable interface We have one method called run Okay, okay. and runnable is the interface if you see this one so there is only one method is there correct it is not a heavier object it is very light interface correct this is this is a interface and which is having only one method correct mm -hmm. so now you can write here whatever you want to do so if you want to do some if you want to execute some for loop you can write it here so I don't want to write for loop. What I will do system out load no not load mm, debit amount from account. Okay. So first I'm trying to debit the amount from the account one and uh, I had to wait for some time. So how to wait, how to stop execution, thread dot, sleep, correct? So let me wait for two seconds. So I will wait so, for two, se yeah. two seconds. Yeah. Plus A implement is runnable. Runnable is another object from the JVM, one, one of those is JVM object, right? It's, yes, it is one of the inbuilt class, inbuilt interface. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the yes. Okay. One of the inbuilt interface. It is coming from Java dot lang interface. Okay. Sorry, Java dot lang package. Okay. So it is inbuilt interface. It is coming from Java dot lang dot runnable. 
so this is the interface and this one we used to call it as a functional interface so this is a jdk 8 feature basically i will tell you what is functional interface meaning a interface which is having only one method is called as a functional interface Okay. It is JDK 8 feature. So whenever I'm going to explain JDK 8 features, so that time I will explain you all the features, what is functional interface, all those things. Okay. Yes. Okay, now, <clears throat> okay, now, first what I'm trying to do, I'm debiting the amount and I'm waiting for two seconds. After that, what I have to do, I have to credit the amount, right? Mm -hmm. So let me write that word. So credit amount into account number two correct mm -hmm. but we are not doing we are not connecting to database all those things just we are writing one statement debit amount wait for two seconds why because it will take some time right it's a transaction so after that we have to create the amount in account number two so this is the task correct this thread will do okay how to how to start this thread so when we implement thread class how we are starting the thread by calling the start method correct right. <coughs> so whenever you are calling start method <coughs> then start method will call the run method correct mm -hmm. so that is the way we are triggering the thread but whereas in case of in this process so how to call the thread so first we have to create object a o b t h1 equal to new a correct A th1 equal to new okay after that what you have to do you have to create an object for thread one t equal to new thread now to start the thread meaning to start the uh, to call the run method here you are we are not able to call directly th1 dot run meaning I sh so see if you see here th1 dot did you see the start method is there here there is no start method so you are not able to call directly from the thread one so what you have to do you have to pass the object to thread class from the t dot start you have to do you have to call from here so this is the way to start the thread so first you have to create an object for thread your thread class and the, that object you have to pass <coughs> to the we have to create a thread constructor so we have to create a thread object and as part of the thread uh, thread class there is a constructor which will take input as a runnable interface object so that you have to pass it here then you have to call the t dot start then you can run this one then you can able to see see amount is debiting so one second is done amount is credited so now run it again one more time see this it's done right okay now what i want to do <coughs> so i want to create two people meaning two people when two people are trying to access what will happen so let me create one more thread meaning so in your case right when you are trying to debit the amount so we have one account one in one place one person is trying to debit the amount and another and, and in another place the same from the same account another guy is trying to debit uh, debit the amount two places two people are trying to debit the amount so what will happen two people are trying to do the same time We will get an issue, right? Right. Like you have an account, account number one. So we have only hundred dollars. 
okay <clears throat> person 1 he is trying to debit the amount from account 1 so 100 dollars at the same time p2 also is trying to debit the amount from account 1 100 dollars persons are different account number is same hmm. if they will do in same time what will happen so both will get 100 100 dollars right right but we should not allow them right right so in this case what you have to do if even though same time same two different people are trying to do transaction and one account what you have to do we have to make them as a sequence one by one correct all right maybe we can do first transaction this one once that is successfully done then when second person is trying to debit the amount what will happen amount should be zero correct mm -hmm. we have to make these two transaction as a sequence we should not make these transactions as a parallel correct mm, right but for example uh, just the business uh, i'm i'm just I'm just putting it from the business aspect of it. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, it's one business account, right? And then there, there's a two shop, three shops, a store is out yes, there. Yes. But in that account has a only thousand dollar, right? Yes, yes, yes. Two, two different store manager is trying to do the money from same account, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's a business account and they deposit the money and everything. Mm -hmm. So they have the priority to withdraw the money as well. So both of them is... Uh, Coincidentally, they are both of them withdrawing the money at the same time, same second. Yes, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. How would that trigger that issue? So that issue, what happened, you know, even though they are trying to do swipe the machine uh, at outlet same time, but when that when it falling under the transaction, what will happen, you know, the transaction will be happening one by one. The method, they will make it as a synchronized. So that we will see later. I mean, after one minute or two minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> the transaction wherever we are doing the delicated operation, right? That will be, they will make it as a sequence, one by one. But you are not able to see the difference. That will take nanoseconds of time. Hmm. So you are not able to see the difference, even though it's happening sequence, one by one. But you are not able to see the delay. Okay. You are not able to see the delay. So you are not able to see the delay. Uh, so how much time it will take one by one. Meaning in this case, well, finally out how, how the transaction will happen, you know. Let me try it out. It's here. So say for instance, this is the transaction method. Okay. We have a two threads called A1 and A, A, A and B, meaning two outlets. Okay, two outlets and same account. So when two people are trying to call same method, right? What will happen? Two people are trying to debit the amount from same account. What will happen? You know how the transaction will happen? First A, after that it is followed by B. This is a sequence, right? Right. It is not a parallel. If it, if, it, if it will happen like this, it is a parallel, correct? If it will do like this, A comma B, if it is not there, then this is a parallel, correct? Mm -hmm. This is a parallel, this is a sequence. So it will follow this approach. It will not follow this one. Sequence, one by one. So, so, so even though it's like they are doing it together, but it's still, it's gonna... Yes. Many but the seconds. transaction will happen one by one. Okay. So only one guy will one guy will get amount, another guy will say insufficient funds. Another guy will get a message like a insufficient funds. Hmm. Okay. So that we will see now. I will show you one simple example. So how we are controlling that kind of situations. That is very, very important, right? So because if two threads, threads means it will start executing parallel, correct? One by one. Right. So we should not allow them. So now let me create one more thread. Okay, now I created one more thread. I'm going to start it. 
let me start the program <coughs> if you see here did you see the debit account credit account it's starting parallelly correct so i started two threads so two threads are trying to debit and two threads are trying to credit did you see the results mm -hmm. it's executing sequence right see how the debit is happened one by one how the credit is happened one by one. it is a sequence programming correct right huh. first as a parallel programming what we have to first debit the amount credit the account after the debit the amount credit the account that is what we are expecting but now it is not happening like that correct right correct this is this is an issue right mm -hmm. so how to solve this issue this issue is clear right right now right so now the debit is happened at one time and credit is happened at a time so now it will give you a problem so these two people will get amount hmm. so they are doing debit one time and they are trying to do credit one time from for, for the two people from the same account then they will get two people will get same amount all right so how to stop this scenario so <coughs> So if you want to see the thread name, how to see that one? Current thread, thread dot, current thread dot, get name. So in the similar way, so now you can able to see the thread name. So which thread is calling? Did you see this? Debit is happened now. Credit is happened at a time. So let me give some more time so that you will we can talk on that more. So now, now I had given four seconds. Did you see the debit is happened from the so two accounts? Did you see this? Mm -hmm. So two threads called debit uh, functionality and it happened together. See from account one happened debit from two threads. Did you see this? Right. so this is an issue right mm -hmm. so what we are expecting first debit the amount from account one and credit the account account two for thread one after that i want to see debit the account from thread zero or something like that correct right but it is not happening it is happening now parallelly so how to stop this one so that we need to use synchronized programming so basically how you are controlling two threads Now we are going to control two threads to execute a piece of code one by one. So that we are going to use synchronized concept. We want to make the threads synchronized meaning one by one. So for that what we are going to do, I am going to use synchronized programming. So let me give one more example. So now you understood right why we need synchronization right so if uh -huh. you see in your atm right so how people are getting the amount one by one correct people or if you see any malls people will be standing in the queue correct right so one by one so people are not standing in parallel people are standing in the queue correct mm -hmm. the similar way we can able to control the threads one by one so right now the threads are executing parallelly correct so debit is happening one time and credit is happening another time Correct. This is a parallel programming. It is not a sequence programming. This is a parallel. Clear, right? This issue is clear, right? Yes. So now, how we are going to fix that issue? So we are going to use synchronize. Okay, let me write another class. Now what I will do, I will copy the same piece of code here also. Let me copy it. So just I copied same piece of code. Okay. Now, so this piece of code, whatever I'm trying to write here, 
what i will do i will create a separate class and i will write one method so let me create class <coughs> account so i created a new class a called account inside that i am going to write public void transaction so this is my transaction operation inside the transaction i am going to keep this piece of code correct okay so now the transaction is happening inside this class inside this method so i will call this method from here so how i am going to call so let me declare a variable called here account so i will call here simply account dot transaction perfect right mm -hmm. so how you will get this object so what i will do i will create a constructor in class called a with an argument this one let me create a constructor create a constructor using account field correct now i am initializing this constructor sorry this account object by using the constructor and as part of the constructor i am assigning the object i am calling the transaction method then the transaction will happen correct all right so main yeah you have any question um i don't understand this this dot sec in a constructor can you a little bit explain to yeah me what is the this means did you see this this is a variable correct right and this is also one variable did you see the two variables is having same name uh, yeah okay and so account. which one you are assigning to which one which account is local one and which one is global one so this is a, this is a local variable right here hmm. and this right. is a global variable so to make the difference to make the difference this means this dot account meaning it's a global variable you are calling okay so this means this uh, is a local within, variable yeah within yes. this method that i'm calling yes, yes. is global so this uh, acc is equal to local variable this dot acc is referring global variable okay so now if you if you remove this one it will give compilation error meaning which one you are assigning to which one you are assigning to this value to this value or this value to this one oh okay so i mean that case is like yeah within this m yes method. yes if you mention this means it is a global variable meaning you are assigning a local variable to global variable okay it is clear right mm -hmm. so now you will not get any warning so that is the purpose of this one so we are assigning the account value account object value then we are calling the account dot transaction method correct all right it is clear right this method so i don't want to write all the piece of code in run method so i created a separate class and inside the separate class there is a separate method inside that i kept my transaction handling part okay okay so now how to call this method how to call this thread the same process copy these two lines and paste it here now let me so my thread activity is done uh manohar can you also show me it's like whenever uh, i know you show me one time but i just wanted to end up the class mm -hmm. sometimes there are some compilation error shows mm -hmm. in the java mm -hmm. and yeah, i think you had done it refresh it or something that you had done it in a class path or something then the error is gone <coughs> i know there is no syntax error in the code and everything uh -huh. sometimes i got that error in that but the, that error for example in a line number uh, line number nine right okay there is a compilation error show right yes yes yeah so for example within that line mm -hmm. nine there is nothing but there still the combination error is still there yes yes. yes yes yeah so how to solve this one right <coughs> so right yeah. now i am creating an object for a sorry i am creating an object for class a correct right did you see any constructor which is having no argument here all the constructor have argument correct there is only default constructor which is there now correct right so now it is fine correct 
So yeah. now I created a default constructor. It is compilation error is gone. So this is a default constructor, right? Okay. So now the compilation error is gone. Previously, there is no default constructor. So that's what it is giving compilation error. Now default constructor is there. So it will be executed this constructor, correct? Right. In previous case, it was like this. Meaning it was like this. Did you see any uh, default constructor? No, there is no default constructor. Right now. So that's what it is failing. The class A object creation is failing because there is no default constructor. There is a one step one constructor, but which is having some argument. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what now you will see the compilation error, correct? Right. But if you assign those uh, account and yes. uh, Perfect. CDF, then there will not be any there will not be any error. They are all right. Now it's gone, right? Right. Now it is fine, right? <coughs> Okay, now let me run the program. So two threads are calling. So now it is happening. Parallel, correct? Right. Now also two debit is happening at a time. Mm -hmm. So this is also parallel programming, correct? Right. But we should not increase this one, correct? So yeah. how to stop this one? To stop this one, what we have to do? We have to make this transaction method as a synchronized, meaning just we have to keep one word called synchronized. Just I added only one single word called so synchronized. The entire code is fine. You'll just put the synchronization word that changes yes, the whole yes. entire So thing. this piece of code can be accessed only one thread at a time, meaning First, let me show you the output, then I will explain you how it will work. Did you see this? Now the debit is happening. Mm -hmm. Only one thread is accessing. Now credit is done. Now second thread debit is happening. Now credit is done. Did you see this? Right. This is a synchronization, right? Mm -hmm. See one thread, thread one, action is done. Debit is done, credit is done. After that, thread zero, debit is done, credit is done. This is a sequence programming, right? Right. This is perfect, correct? Mm -hmm. Say for instance, the thread one is got debited hundred dollars, and thread zero also is trying to debit same hundred dollars. If there is no amount, then thread zero will not get any amount, correct? Right. So this is called synchronization. Meaning, when I was explaining the thread, uh, sorry, string and string buffer. I told you right, it's synchronized, not synchronized. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, string is not synchronized and string buffer is synchronized. Meaning all the methods, whatever is available inside string buffer. So they are synchronized. Meaning if you want to see this one, string. String buffer. <coughs> see all the methods. Did you see this? Almost all the methods are synchronized, meaning only one thread can able to access this method at a time, only one thread. Correct? Right. If you give here five seconds, so even though multiple threads are waiting, but they have to wait for five seconds. See, thread one is debiting the amount. Thread one transaction, thread zero transaction is happening. That is done after that thread one is started. That is done. Did you see the delay, right? Mm -hmm. So they had to wait. Meaning, say for instance, one you one guy is entering into the house. If there is a key, so he will open the key and he will enter inside the net. Then once he will enter, he will once he will enter inside that, he will what he will do, he will lock the door from the house inside the house. Then nobody will enter inside the right. Right. So you will enter inside the house. Then what he will do? He will lock the door from the inside. Then other people not able to enter inside. Correct? He already locked the door from inside the house. Once he will come out the house and he will give the key to other people. Then they can able to enter inside the house. Meaning, so whenever a thread is entering inside this transaction method, it will take the key and with the thread and it will come inside. And key is there now inside the transaction method. So other 
people not able to enter inside the car inside the house correct hmm. so so meaning if you go back here this thread one and thread two are sharing same object correct mm -hmm. correct right so this thread one and thread two are sharing same object meaning same key we have only one key mm -hmm. so we have only one key but two people are trying to access that key they are not able to access meaning in a similar way if you see the atm machine so if people are standing in the queue so one by one people can able to enter inside that all the people not able to enter inside the atm machine Why? because we have only one atm machine in the similar way here we have only one account but two people are there right so they have to wait one by one even though first person is taking more time maybe he's withdrawing more amount like hundred dollar hundred dollar hundred dollar like that but still we have to wait correct mm -hmm. that is called sequence programming it is clear right right mm -hmm. so this is very very important how you are controlling the transactions by using synchronizing keyword okay right mm -hmm. okay so each object is having only one unique lock correct mm -hmm. now what i will do <coughs> let me create another there is a small change i will do in this this program is clear right right now right uh -huh. programming synchronized so now what i will do i am going to create one more small change in this example So I will copy the same entire programming as it is. So I am going to change the main class name. Just same as it is, I copied everything and uh, this is the synchronized and this is the transaction method and two threads I created, uh, thread one and thread two, I'm calling the transaction method, correct? Right. So what I want, I'm going to do, I'm going to make this one as a static method, correct? Mm -hmm. Did you see the static method? So if, <coughs> sorry, if it is a static method, if it is a static method then what will happen so i i no need to create any object right i can able to access directly by using account correct mm -hmm. so do i need this all those things i know no need to create an object right so i can able to access directly account dot transaction why because this is a static static method correct Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to the app, so do I need to create object account? Not mean. required, correct? So I can remove this one, correct? Right, it's static, you don't have to create the object. No need to create an object, correct? Now, let me run it, what will happen? Did you see this? Now also it is happening, sequence, correct? Mm -hmm. It is sequence programming, right? Right. The previously we are using object, but right now we are not using any object. We are calling the method directly by using static <laughs> because this is the static. Now, what is the difference between static synchronization and non-static synchronization? 
so this is a non -st non static synchronization this is a static, static synchronization meaning so <coughs> if a class is having some static attributes so this static fields or attributes or methods is not part of your object correct right so you can able to access this with these things without creating an object also meaning it is not part of your object hmm. meaning even though you are creating 10 objects 10 account objects so inside these objects the static fields will be not there it will be sitting in some other place in only one place so for all the objects this is common correct Right. Meaning static fields are not part of your object. So, so it will be common for everyone. So everybody can able to access it. Correct. But we have only one key to everyone. We have only one key. So th that is the only one key how to use everyone. So, but whereas in previous example, so you created one object, correct? One object we are sharing here. Say for instance, if you create another object, meaning here, so in this case the lock will be per object the lock will be per object so here one object we are sharing two thread classes right all right so if we create one more object like this here what will happen you will get two keys did you see this now this is a different account object this is different of account object meaning here we have a two keys Mm -hmm. got it right account one account is having one key account two is having another key two keys mm -hmm. meaning we have a two ATM machines right we have a two ATM machines here but whereas as per the previous example if you remove it so what will happen we have only one object correct only one object we are sharing meaning we have only one ATM machine Hmm. Okay. So as long as you are sharing the same object, we have only one lock. If you are creating multiple objects, then you will get multiple keys. Correct? If you create multiple objects, then it will start executing parallelly. Right. Right now we are sharing same object, right? So hmm. what it will do? It will execute <coughs> sequence programming. See this sequence, right? Right, one at a time. One at a time. So now second thread is executing. Say for instance, now if you will create another object and if you will give as an input to the thread two, what will happen? So you are creating one more ATM machine, and two ATM machines are there. Two people are there. Did you see this? Yep. Two people can able to debit it, right? So, but right. it will cause it will cause damage for your transaction, correct? Right. So that's what we should not use multi-object creation. So we have to share same object always among all the threads. Hmm. Okay, but if you don't want to care about why we need to create same object or a duplicate object just make that one as a static so then you no need to care about single object or multi object correct did you see here any object creation no just we are trying to access directly static because static method is common for all the objects because this is not part of your object so there is only one key is there always you are not able to create multiple keys, multiple keys at any time. You don't have rights. You are not able to create duplicate keys. You have only one key always. So right. this is more secure, correct? Right. If it is not static, then you can able to create multiple objects and you can able to create multiple or duplicate keys. But here you are not able to create duplicate keys. So yep. this is the difference between synchronization, meaning static synchronization and not static synchronization. Clear, right? Right. Okay. Now, 
will show you one more last example for today maybe this threads are if you see it a little bit confused if you practice one more time then it will become very easy people will feel threads are very very difficult but if you see this do you feel it is difficult <laughs> it is a little difficult yeah, but yeah. that's what you need to practice one more time first time it will make a lot of confusion but if you practice one more time then you will get uh, uh, more comfortable first time it, it will create a lot of confusion Mm -hmm. And this, especially this uh, synchronization, is very important. Yeah, this, this which just shows that why is it important synchronization? Yes, yes sir, because all banking related things, so they have to follow the synchronization. Otherwise, the entire banks will collapse. All right. So now, say for instance, <coughs> we have two threads. Now. We have a thread, so this is one big thread. So here I am calling one sub thread. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whenever I am calling this thread, so this is one thread and this is another thread, correct? So this is the parent thread. So this is the parent thread, correct? Right. So this is a parent thread and this is a child thread, correct? Right. So okay. whenever I am calling child thread from parent. So it will start executing and it is also start executing parallelly, right? So do two are independent thread, it will start executing parallelly. Correct? Right. So whenever I'm calling child thread, so I don't want to execute parent thread. I want to stop it. Once the child thread execution is done, then only I want to execute remaining portion of the parent thread. So how to control that one? So first I will show you the problem, then we will see how to stop this one. So, <coughs> so this is just very very simple one just only one method so in demo this is the last example so this is also a main thread right mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is also one thread right so last one we saw it, it is a main thread correct right okay so if you how you can say this is the thread or not integer x equal to 9 by 0 if i run this one what will happen it's gonna fail it's gonna fail correct it's gonna fail and it will say did you see that if you read it very carefully what will happen exception in thread main but did we create any thread here Nope. No, but it is saying main is a thread, correct? Right. Meaning JVM will create thread for this class. Meaning it will extend this class and it will create a thread. Okay. Ah. Then it will become a parent thread. Okay. Okay. This is a parent thread, correct? So from parent thread, we are getting exception. Okay. Now, what I want to do, I want to create a sub thread class called a and let me extend it make it simple we can create threads by using thread also correct mm -hmm. run method so let me write here one simple for loop For i equal to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. So print it. I, after that, what I want to do, I want to wait for one second. So it will wait for 10 seconds. So let me write, let me handle. So I'm printing one number and I'm waiting for one second, correct? Mm -hmm. Did you see this? I'm printing one number and I'm waiting for one second. Printing one number and waiting for a second. So it will take total 10 seconds to print these numbers, correct? Right. So A O B equal to new. A. How to call this thread? O B dot start, correct? 
right so now if i will start this one you will it will print numbers 10 seconds it will take correct one two three four five correct mm -hmm. so this is a parent thread and this is a child thread correct right. okay now execution is done now what i want to do i want to do same task in my child thread also sorry parent thread so i want to print here from 10 to 20 did you see this from child thread i am printing 10 to 20 sorry from child thread i am printing 0 to 10 and from parent thread i am printing from 10 to 20 correct mm -hmm. so now let me run and you will see the difference did you see these two threads are executing right or wrong yeah. So if you want to know whether it is executing two threads or not, we will print the thread name. Correct? Mm -hmm. Thread. Okay, now let me run, then we will see the thread names also. Did you see this? Thread 0 is giving output, main thread also is giving output. Meaning, here, through two threads are running, correct? Right. So, this is main thread, correct? Mm -hmm. And this is child thread. So, right. child thread name is thread hyphen 0 and main thread name is main. Okay. So here, did you see that two threads are executed parallelly, right? Right. So what I want to do here, so whenever my child thread is executing, I don't want to execute my parent thread. So once child thread execution is done, then only I want to execute this for loop. So how to control that one? So to control that one, what we have to do? There is a method called join. So it is join method will throw an exception called interrupted exception. So what you have to do, whether you have to declare try case or else you have to throw the exception. So I am throwing the exception. So now let me call, let me run this program. Did you see this? Now which thread is executing? Now, child thread is executing, correct? Right. Now, it's, uh, before it's a parent, right? Yes. This is thread hyphen zero is child thread. Meaning this one. I can say here child instead of writing thread name. If you are confusing, I will write here child. So here you can say here parent. So now it is clear. Instead of thread names, we'll write our own names. So now let me run it. <coughs> Do you see which thread is executing now? No, I see. Okay. Child thread. Parent yeah. thread is not at all executing, correct? Still, we have okay. to execute this for loop, but it is not executing. Now, parent thread is executing. Meaning, I can give you a realistic example. Say, for instance, you find a print. Printing, printing machine is there, right? Mm -hmm. So printing machine, what it is doing, currently it is loading the paper, papers. Mm -hmm. It is trying to load the papers, but one guy is given printing. So what will happen? Which one it should take first? First, it should finish the loading task, paper loading task, then only it should go to the printing task, correct? Right. We should not do two, two things parallelly. <clears throat> So in that case, what it will do? So they will use join. First, join means they will try to finish the current task. After that, they will take the another task. Hmm. Correct? Okay. The similar way here also, loading the paper is a child task and printing the things is a main task. 
right so this is is kind of loading papers correct we don't know how much time it will take correct it, right now we have given 10 times so you can give how many papers is that that many times it will load it correct mm -hmm. after that we have to print the pages we can able to control two threads partially correct right just by using join method so it will stop executing this piece of code once this is execution is done then only it will execute remaining code otherwise it will not execute correct clear right mm -hmm. so this is the <coughs> advantage of join method so join method will is will throw a compile time exception called interrupted exception so we have to add try catch or throw the exception clear right right these are very very important most of the people will confuse for threads and they will say threads are very very difficult but if you spend one more if you read this video one more time then it will give you more clear and clarity for you right hmm. clear right yep yeah you can practice it or you can uh, visit the video again and again maybe one or two times then you will get uh, some more more clarity and then if you have any doubts we will discuss again tomorrow okay okay just try to spend some more time for this video only for threads then if you have any questions we will discuss first uh, your questions only because to continue to the next class try to we will understand the existing uh, existing things then only we'll go to the next topics okay Okay. Still, we have uh, threads. It's not yet completed. Okay. Still, we have some more things. Still, I need one more class to finish the threads. Okay. It's tough. Okay. Because <laughs> generally, I will not explain this much, but still, I'm explaining slowly because so many things are there in thread. But I'm explaining one by one slowly, so you can spend some more time, and still we will discuss some more things. Okay. We'll okay. tomorrow same time. Sure, definitely. Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, right. thanks. Thank you. Thanks.